8.5 Cartesian equations of a plane. Example 7. Find a formula for the scalar equation of a plane in terms of a, b and c where a, b and c are the x, y and z intercepts of a plane respectively. Assume that all intercepts are non-zero. Okay. Now that's interesting. First part is scalar equation. What is it? Scalar equation is same as Cartesian equation of a plane, right? So, which is written as ax plus by plus cz plus d equals to 0. Correct? Now, we are given x intercept, y intercept, and z intercept. So, what is x intercept? So, x intercept for us is 1, 0, 0. Correct? Y intercept is 0, 1, 0, correct? Uh, in fact, I should write as A, B, C. So it is A. And Y intercept is 0, B, 0, right? B is your Y intercept. And Z intercept is C. So it is 0, 0, C. C is the Z intercept, correct? So these are basically three points, correct? Now, when you're given these three points, what we can do is, in the standard equation, we'll replace x, y, and z with these points and see what do we get. So, okay, if I write point A, which is, which is the x-intercept, then I get A for x, I get A times A plus 0 for y, that means 0, 0 for z, that means this, and we get plus d equals to 0. Well, from here we can find what a is in terms of d, right? So this implies that a equals to minus d over small a. Correct? Let's do the same thing with the second intercept point. The y-intercept is at b. So let's write this point 0, b0 in our equation. So, 0 for x will give us 0 here. B for y will give us capital B times B plus 0 for C plus D equals to 0. That implies that we can write B as minus D over B. Correct? Similarly, we'll put the third intercept point in our equation and we get this 0, this 0 and here we get C times small c plus d equals to 0. And this implies c equals to minus d over c. Correct? So we got some values for our normals, a, b, c, which is minus d over a, minus d over b, minus d over c. So what we can do is that in our main equation of Cartesian equation, we can always substitute a, b, c with these, right? So once we do that, we get minus d over a times x, right? plus, let me write minus d over b in bracket, okay, minus d over b times y, plus minus d over c times z, plus d equals to 0, correct? Now, from here, we can take d comma, right? Or what we can do is that we can take d on this side and then divide by d, correct? Or we'll just modify this equation and we say d equals to and we'll take all other terms on the right side. So if I do that and I'll take minus d comma, so it becomes d here, right? So d times I get x over a plus y over b plus z over c, right? Now, I can divide d by d, and once I do that, what do I get? If I divide d by d, I get 1 equals to x over a plus y over b plus z over c. So that is the equation which we can form and which could represent our scalar equation. You see, this is a very, very important equation, right? So... So x divided by x intercept plus y divided by y intercept plus z divided by z intercept is equal to 1. 
Okay, that's a huge and very important formula to be used. And remember here, of course, a, b, and c cannot be zero, right? When we write them in denominator, so that means we have a, b, and c are not equal to zero, correct? Only then you can use this equation, correct? So that's how we get, and that's why this condition is also given to you. Assume that all intercepts are non-zero, right? I've seen in some books, they write, they multiply everything with a, b, c, and then they can write the same formula as a, b, c equals 2. So if I multiply with a, b, c, I get here b, c, x plus a, c, y plus a, b, z, right? But I prefer this. So because this like gives you x over x intercept plus y over y intercept plus z over c intercept equals to 1. It's similar to the intercept form of equation lines, right? Well, this is how for the plane, correct? I hope that you love it. Thank you.